so for chapter four, um, again, we want to start kind of understanding the basic units of the metric system. We'll start there, use the right abbreviations for that, and then converting metric and household. That's kind of that main chart I've told you she needs to start knowing. And then as always, any kind of dosage we're doing, any kind of calculation, we're mostly looking for a dose. We're looking for how many pills or whatever it needs to take to give. Uh, to give to the patient. We just want to make sure we're double checking that and again have a method to stick with is the goal. Um, uh, we will talk about some patient safety stuff um, here and there. Again, I only test you over math. I don't have any questions that are really like making you think like a nurse yet, that sort of stuff. But of course there's going to be a lot of stuff that we do in this class. A lot of things We'll talk even today a little bit about syringes, and we'll talk some stuff that's nursing specific, but nothing that I'm directly testing you over. Um, just so you hear some of these things, you get a foundation. So yeah, like I said, page 109 is chapter four. In the first couple of pages, they're doing what we're doing today. They're talking about the metric system. So what the metric system is, again, I joke that in America, we usually measure things in freedom units, which is, we're talking inches, miles, that sort of stuff. Most places across the world are in the metric system. You're thinking of, again, the milligrams, the grams, the uh, uh, kilometers, meters, those things, kilograms, all those fun milliliters and liters, those fun things, which we see here in America too, right? Because you're we all know what a two liter bottle looks like. Again, that's two liters, that's metric system. But we also see ounces and stuff, that's freedom units, that's imperial, that's not what we're focusing on. So a lot of the discussion will be, all right, how do we convert some of that, those units to metric system? And then also the discussion will be, hey, on the metric system, how do we convert stuff on that scale? Things that are the same, <clears throat> um, but we need to go back and forth. We need to make them smaller, we need to make them bigger. So metric system in general is nice because everything is pretty much divisible by tens, okay? So everything can move up and down based on tens. And the abbreviation kind of follows that and you'll see that as we go. Um, so the basic units of measurement in the metric system cover all the three things kind of in the world, but mass is what we're talking about, grams. And so these are the baseline for everything. Grams is like equivalent to kind of like, write your ounces in, in here that we use. We're talking about something in grams. That's talking about its mass, its weight, how much uh, weight it has. That's what mass is talking about. Volume is the basic unit for that is liters. And again, that's volume is measuring a liquid or how much space is taken up in a container. So like this big giant Purell hand soap, or whatever, is exactly, technically it says it is exactly two liters when it's full. But if this was empty and I filled it with water, it would still be two liters just now of water, right? This container has a volume of two liters, meaning that this container can hold two liters of something. That's its volume. So volume is usually always talking about liquid, but just kind of keep in mind that volume is really just how much space is taken up inside a container. It doesn't necessarily have to be the liquid, but that's what we're focused on. And then length, which we don't deal with as much in nursing as much, is, is the basic unit for that is meters. So we've heard of centimeters and millimeters. Kilometers, I say it like that, but it's technically kilometers. They're bigger meters. So all of that can be scaled effectively pretty easily in steps of 10, basically. Household measurements we've already touched on, and I'll keep touching on them, but those are the things like the teaspoon, tablespoons, cups, um, and those are can vary, and so we're always trying to convert those to a more formal unit of measurement, in this case, the metric system when we can, and that's that memorization of one teaspoon is five milliliters, one tablespoon is 50 milliliters, that sort of stuff. So this is a big chart, and this is kind of modeled after that chart that's on page 111 in your book. So don't freak out by this, but it kind of shows you what's happening, basically. So what they're saying is that the way the metric system works, you have your middle ground, your baseline unit, okay? For example, if we just use the grams thing, right? Your baseline, the zero unit here is the grams. That's like, oh, come on. the grams, which is abbreviated with just a lowercase g, because an uppercase g looks weird. So if that's the grams, what they're saying is that by tens, I can get bigger, I can get smaller, okay? 
So uh, there's decigrams, centigrams, milligrams, micro. These are all prefixes that tell me what this value is, all right? Same thing the other way, deca, hecto, um, kilo. And they note with this, these are not usually seen in medications, hecto, deca or not really. But I can give you, I'll show you my small chart that really summarizes it all for you, okay? But overall, we're not going to work with all these. There's not a lot of things that are in the centi or deci. There's not a lot in much, there's not anything that's in medication that's ever going to be in deca or hecta or hecto. So a lot of times we can focus on one thing. So it means that on a scale, if I'm looking at something, so again, here's milli, which means these are milli, if I was talking about grams, you see this milligrams is a thousand, here's it's in the thousands place, is a thousand times smaller than a gram. You see this? If you go the other way, bigger units of measurement, look at a kilo, right? One, two, three, value a thousand. This is saying that this is a thousand times bigger than a gram. So again, it's just, if I want to go on the scale, I'd be saying basically, well, if I want to figure out how much a gram is, compared to a milligram as far as converting them, I would just say, oh, okay, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. Now I'm there. But it's a lot easier to say something instead of going divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. I can get there very easily just kind of by going, because divide by 10 three times is the same thing as saying that. Because 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000. You see what I'm saying? It'd be the same way the other way. And so a lot of what this we're talking about is saying, oh, if I have a doctor that just says, hey, give him, you know, 100, uh, 500 milligrams of something, but I only have tablets that comes in grams, this is saying that they are in a bigger unit of measurement, but they're still on the same scale. So I can convert those to what I need. And that's a lot of what we're doing with the metric system. But again, the good news is, that a lot of these you're not going to see in medications at all. You're not going to see Centi, you're not going to see Deci, you're not going to see Hecto or Deca. You're not going to see these in medications. So again, this is the whole metric scale, but we don't have to, we have the luxury of not even really needing to look at the whole metric scale because we have no medications that are ever uh, manufactured in, in any of these sizes for us. Um, one down there at the bottom, you notice micrograms. Look at the difference, though. There's a jump there. There's not a jump by 10. There's a jump there by 1,000. Look at this, see? Tens, hundreds, thousands, 10,000, 100,000, millions place, basically. It's jumping by another 1,000 just from the milli. So it's like micro is one of those things where it's really, really small, and it's all by its lonesome out there. And if you're like, I don't know what you're saying, just we'll get there. Don't worry, we'll get there. I'm going to show you a, kind of a, a cheap trick, basically, to kind of make sure you get there. But that's all the metric system does is say, hey, I've gotten to measure something in weight, <clears throat> and I can tell you how big or small it is with the other unit of measurement just by kind of doing some division or multiplication, or just like anything in the, in, with the decimal stuff we talked about with the percent thing, I can move a decimal around, and that's the easiest way to figure these out. So we'll get there. That's your introduction. We'll get there. Don't worry. But that's your metric system in general. It's just a measurement by tens of everything. So talking about these more in depth, again, grams is the measurement of weight, micrograms, milligrams, grams. So this PowerPoint also tells you the only, way, only ones you're going to find in medication is micro, milli, and grams. You're not even going to find kilograms in medication. Now, you'll find kilograms when we're talking about weight of a patient or weight of something like that, but you're not going to find it in grams. So just giving you a quick glance, you guys could go through and memorize these, but I think it's much easier just to move up and down the scale. So what they're telling you here is that one milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms because it is 1,000 times and I forgot to grab my, oh, I, have, I don't have my cups. Um, a thousand times smaller. And to give you a perspective of this, um, let 
I'm gonna borrow your Starbucks cup. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So we would argue that this cup is smaller than this Starbucks cup, right? We'd all agree to that? Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, what that would mean is that I would need to fill this cup up at least a couple times probably to fill this all the way up with liquid, right? Like if I put all this, fill this to the brim and I pour it in, I'm not gonna fill it up. So this is a smaller unit of measurement, this cup, compared to the Starbucks cup. So it takes more of these smaller units to fill this up. You see what I'm saying? So anything like that, the microgram thing is saying it's going to take more micrograms to fill up the same size container if I'm measuring that in milligrams. Now again, I'm talking about liquid here, and this is weight, but that's the concept I'm saying. It'd be like having a bowl, a very big giant bowl. If I want to fill that up with stuff, it would take a bunch of small bowls to fill it up. Do you see what I'm saying there? And so that's why whenever you're talking about a smaller unit of measurement compared to something bigger, it's always going to take more smaller cups to fill up the big cup and so on and so forth. But if I was going the reverse, I'm like, I want to take the Starbucks cup that's full and fill up a smaller cup. It wouldn't take even half of that cup to fill up that small cup I just had in my hand. So it'd be a smaller number. And that's why the numbers are changing. One gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So what they're saying here is, that, hey, these three units of measurement out of that whole big metric system is all you're going to see for weight in medication. You're not going to see anything else. You're not going to see these deca and hectas and stuff. So the great news is for us is that I'm like, well, my phone just keeps buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. I'm like, what is the problem here? Leave me alone, whoever you are. Make sure it's not an instructor. OK, it's not an instructor. That's fine. All right. Um, what they're telling you is that, hey, you're lucky here because you don't have to worry about those other units of measurement in the metric system. We can just worry about these three, and these three are a thousand times different from each other. And so all I need to know is which way I'm getting on the scale, and I can start working through it. And so again, I've mentioned already the word conversion. The word conversion is really just saying, I'm like that cup saying, I'm still measuring a liquid with her cup and the cup I had. I'm just converting it to a bigger unit of measurement, the Starbucks cup, versus a smaller unit of measurement, the blue solo cup kind of thing. And some con that's all conversion is saying is I'm changing it from something that's equivalent to something else. The one that was memorization for us, again, is the, the example they're giving us is the pounds thing. That's just memorization. There's not really math we can do. We just have to memorize things. But with 1,000 grams to a one kilogram or blah, 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 I can say, again, it is saying that 1,000 grill, bleh, 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram. One kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So theoretically, 2.2 pounds is also equivalent to 1,000 grams. They are all on the equal playing field here. But we know that the conversion for us is we say one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So when I'm doing that conversion, I just have to know which way I'm going. So, and they give us an example. Patient weighs 65 kilograms. Okay. Again, you could use raised proportion to always solve these problems if you have what you know. If one kg is to 2.2 pounds equals, right? I need to know how much 65 kilograms kg is to x pounds. This is real simple, but then I'm just multiplying. 2.2 times 65, that sort of thing. That's it. And then I'd find out how many pounds they weigh. If it was the opposite, OK, they give us a, a patient weighs 220 pounds. All I'm changing there is now I just don't know how many kgs that is, how many kilograms it is. But I do know that they're 220 pounds. I'm just doing the same math again. 2.2x, 1 times 220 is 220. And now I'm having to do division to go from pounds to kilograms. But you can see where ratio of portion is good. Because I can use it to figure out anything. In case you forget, I, with that one, again, that one I say is pure memorization because it is in the sense of I have to know that baseline. I have to know the baseline memorization of 
This is the conversion from the freedom unit of pounds to kilograms. One kilogram is worth 2.2 pounds. So that's, again, some discussion about weight. If you're like still not understanding, don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going with this. So volume, again, is a measurement of liquid, but I always try to preference that volume does not just mean liquid, it means how much space the container takes up. So example, again, this is two liters of Purell, but it's not full, right? So theoretically, I could pour this out and figure out exactly how much Purell is in here, and I could figure out exactly how much air is in here. And they would both take up a volume. They would take up space. Air takes up space just like liquid does. So to say there's this much Purell in here is correct, but I can't say there's two, point, uh, two liters because it's not. There's this much Purell and there's this much air. Um, but again, the whole container is a two liter space that's taken up with something. And so some of the ones, really the biggest one you're ever going to see in here is the one highlighted here. One liter equals to a thousand milliliters. These are the conversions you're really only ever going to do for the most part in medication. You're not really going to do much else. Other unit of measurement that sometimes might pop up is deciliter, um, kiloliter, and then obviously milliliter. Milliliter is always going to come up, but deciliter, usually you only see that like on labs. If you guys have ever looked at labs or you're a lab tech or you've drawn blood or done stuff, there's some lab results that come in a ratio of this deciliter per, you know, per blah, 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 deciliter of blood or blah, 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 per deciliter of blood, that sort of stuff. Um, but for medication, the only thing we're ever going to mess around with is pretty much bog standard milliliters. You're never going to mess around with like a microliter because remember that is like super small. Micro is a, a prefix that represents something a thousand times smaller than milli. We don't have anything that measure that. It'd be hard to even see that in a microscope, that amount of liquid. So that one's not one we're really going to be messing with. Um, so realistically, as long as you have liters and milliliters down, you're doing fine on the metric system. Um, Again, the book is mentioning those household measurements. I've got it, this summarized in one sheet in your uh, nursing math need to knows and your course content. But just to give it to you again, teaspoon, right, five milliliters. Tablespoon, 15. One ounce is 30 milliliters. And again, that's saying one fluid ounce. One fluid ounce that we use in America to measure liquid is equivalent to 30. Okay, again, some of these, if I Google them, I'm going to get... 2.967 repeating or something like that, we're rounding that up to 30 because we need an easy thing to measure with. And a lot of these household measurements will really only come up for you guys when you're talking about intakes and outputs. Does anyone work as a tech and talk I's and O's? Yeah. So I's and O's, right, is just saying, oh, my, the patient drank, uh, I forget what a milk carton is, is it eight ounces? What is it? 240, right. So you knew, 240 milliliters, so you knew it right off the bat. So you've done it enough, right, that you have that memorized, and that's what comes with time. So yeah, so a, a milk carton's eight ounces, but if I know, right, one ounce is equal to 30, then I'm just going, well, eight times 30, 240, done, okay? And again, like you said, it's like you just rattled it off, right? Some of these will come memorization as you work, but you had to kind of start somewhere to know the foundation. One cup, a cup is a household measurement. That's equal to eight ounces, which then tells me it's equal to 240. Um, quarts are approximately a thousand milliliters. Um, they're, coarse, they're close to that, but I don't find it very often that quarts and pints, quarts and pints don't typically get used a lot um, in, uh, in healthcare. Sometimes they'll use, they'll talk about pints of, bl of blood when they talk about blood administration, but typically they say units for blood and like one unit, one. And I can tell you from, uh, from experience when administering blood products, that'll be something that you guys can help do. You won't ever start that as an LPN. So it's not a big concern for you, but blood products, they vary on how much they actually are milliliters. They're consistently somewhere in the neighborhood of like 500 milliliters, but they vary. It just depends. So I wouldn't worry about quarts and pints so much. I think if you got the cup down, you can find out anything a patient eats or drinks, and you'll be in good shape there with liquid measurements. Again, volume is the right word for liquid measurements in the metric system, and that is, again, saying 
how much liquid is in something, or how much space does the container take up. Lastly is length. Um, again, this is not one that's going to come up too much in healthcare. The big ones are going to be your, your measurement of weight for pills and medications and your milliliters, but Kilometer, again, is a thousand meters. Oh, one meter is a thousand millimeters, and it kind of, centimeter is a, a hundredth of a meter. So it's like, these are just, again, I can look at these by tens and go down that big chart. Again, metric unit number lines is what that chart is kind of modeled after on page 111. It's not my favorite, but everything is got, goes by tens. Um, um, again, it makes it the, my, the PowerPoint here is making a note that you might see meters or something or a unit of measurement and length used on something that's a topical medication. The biggest one I can ever think of is nitro paste or nitroglycerin paste. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Um, it's still used, but nitro paste is nitroglycerin that's a topical that goes on the chest to treat chest pain, cardiac pain, relatively. Um, and it'll have doses of like one half inch or something of nitro paste. But all the nitro paste has, it comes with its own little paper that has a measurement thing on it. You just put that much medicine on there, slap it on someone, and make sure you don't leave it on too long because, uh, you know, you don't want to drop your blood pressure. So that's a whole rabbit trail. But it's very rare. The biggest thing I can think of for these, really, for units of measurement, is probably you're going to see a lot of centimeters used for wound measurements. <coughs> and that's, again... The real reason you would measure a wound is just to keep track of healing or not healing. That's really what you're doing there. Is the wound getting bigger and worse? Is it getting smaller? Is it healing? You know, that's what you're looking at with a wound. And it's really just keeping up consistency, right? Because if I don't know how, if, you know, a lot of us, a lot of facilities have wound care nurses that do that stuff and keep up with it. But as a nurse, I should have the common sense to be able to grab a tape measure and look at some lines on a tape measure and figure out how something is, okay? If you can't do that, I'll let you borrow a tape measure, keep it for a few weeks, you'll be fine, okay? It's about the easiest thing to do, all right? Um, but we all should have that ability to kind of look at it, follow the numbers, and, and measure a wound because what I don't want to do as a nurse, I, can't, I have to know what the baseline is, right? If I read something, the patient came in with a wound on their arm that was a centimeter wide or whatever, that's pretty wide, but you see what I'm saying? And then I look at it a week later, and it's almost three centimeters wide. Well, that's not good, right? That's a problem I need to address. So that's all really units of measurement are going to be used for, mostly wounds as we're going to run into it. Like I said, there is a topical medicine. The most common one I can think of in my practice was nitro paste. And that, seemed to, that seems to have fallen out of, like, best practice. But I, I can't say. It's been a few years since I worked the bedside of the hospital. In the last few years, I did ortho, so I very rarely dealt with chest pain or cardiac patients. Um, so, but I did a lot in med surge, so I mean, things change. That's one thing with healthcare, things change about every three or four years. About every time there's a five years, there's a new cycle of research, and then people change opinions on stuff. And then sometimes we're doing stuff we were doing back in the early 2000s now. Again, you know, it just changes. But one memorization that's on that nursing math need to know is, is again, our freedom units, our one inches. Our inches converted to centimeters, and this one is just flat 2.5. It's not, it is not, are you hearing me? It's not 2.54. It's not. If I Google it just like ounce to milliliters, I'm going to get a Google result that says 2.54. Sure. But in healthcare, the Joint Commission and other standard, other people that recommend standards of practice have said 2.5 is a great place to be because 2.54, if you've ever used a tape measure or anything, measuring stuff in centimeters up to the hundreds place is going to get into a wild ride for you. And so we don't need to do that. So correct conversion for an inch is 2.54. That's flat. That's no argument. That's just what it is. And they're saying there's an example about the applying the nitro paste stuff, the topical medication, um, and using a ruler. They're talking about, well, you can square it. I, I just left this slide in here. Don't stress that. Anything you would have to put on topical like that would only one I can think of that has an exact amount of length you're supposed to put is nitro paste. And they come with a piece of paper that tells you what to put. There's no, like, really math that's involved there. So 
but that unit of measure, that conversion is just like the pounds and kilograms. It's flat memorization, nothing else. That's your no, okay? So again, talking about conversions as a, a concept, it's just saying that I can convert as long as stuff is in the same scale. So converting grams to milligrams, milligrams to grams, stuff like that. Liters to milliliters, milliliters to liters. What I can't convert, what I can't convert is in, incompatible units of measurement. And this would go for any, this isn't just a metric system, but this would be free units. There's no way that I can turn the fluid ounces of your drink you have into inches. How, what, do you, what does that mean, right? We're talking about different things entirely, okay? So we're, that's why it matters that you kind of keep the concept of, we have all of our systems, especially the metric system, has ways to measure mass, weight of something, volume, liquid, and length. And we all have that. We have that, again, inches and fluid ounces and pounds and ounces in uh, Imperial US system. So I can't convert something that's milliliters to milligrams because there is no conversion. That's not what a conversion is that we're talking about two different things. That's like me talking about baseball and you talking about, I don't know what, uh, cricket, okay? We're talking about two different things. All right, well, they're very, those are actually kind of similar sports. That was a bad analogy, <laughs> but we're talking about two different things, okay? We're not even anywhere in the ballpark. So that's not what a conversion is. A conversion is still changing something on a weight scale, changing something on a length scale or on a volume scale to fit what we need, okay? And it doesn't change the value, that's why we have to change the number. The number changes, but the value doesn't change. So that's what they're saying. Yes, if I, I the same thing, if I have one kilogram of something, I do have a thousand milligrams. It just depends on what I'm gonna use, okay? They are equivalent to each other. So for me to have something that weighs exactly a kilogram, I could tell you it weighs a thousand grams, and that would be correct. I can tell you it weighs one kilogram, that's correct because they are equivalent to each other. That's converting on the same measurement scale. So they're saying, hey, I'm gonna convert large to small. There's a couple methods, and I wish this was a little bit, I thought this was, this looks bigger whenever you have it on a computer. On this screen, it looks really small, but this theme works for all the conversions we do with the metric system. If I'm going from something that's a bigger unit of measurement, they're saying to convert grams, large, that is a larger unit of measurement compared to milligrams. They are smaller. For everything we do, everything we do, we're only gonna move a thousand times smaller or a thousand times bigger because that list of stuff, like I said, we don't use that for medications. Deca, Hecto, Desi, Cinti, those are never touched by medications. So when we're doing medication conversions, we don't have to worry about anything else that is not a thousand times bigger or a thousand times smaller. So how do we get there? Easy peasy. Let's just look at it. For example, this question is saying, I want to convert grams, again, converting it to a different unit of measurement on the same scale, which is measuring weight, to milligrams. So that scale that I was talking about is pretty much this gets you everywhere. And I think I had this video, but I look at it like this, basically. I'm trying to draw a crown on my tippy toes and I'm gonna fall over, okay. I'm trying to do like a feminine crown, but this is not working on my tippy toes, or whatever. Or a queen, I don't know, all right. It's a baby. All right, I give up. I can't draw my tippy toes. It's a baby. All right, so here. <laughs> I can't draw my tippy toes. So this is like the easiest way to think about this for everything. And these fit in the same, because I remember the base unit for everything was grams for weight, liters for volume, uh, meters. That's the base. So liters would fit here. So would um, meters. 
they would fit in the same line. And then milli micro is what we're showing here. These are all prefixes. And so if you look at the scale, there's one video I had that she talked about the way to kind of remember this. Is this is all we're going to mess with. We're only going to ever really mess. We're not even really going to mess with length at all as far as converting. We're pro this, these one, two, three, four, five, six, these six units of measurement is all you are ever going to mess with in, in medication. And I promise you that this is no line or no cap, whatever they say. All right. No cap. All right. That's, I'm using that appropriately, right? I'm not like cursing someone out. All right. Right. Yeah, I'm not cursing someone out, am I? Anyway, it's not a lie. This, this is all you'll need. You do not need to have any of the other metric system de prefixes in your head. Deca, hecta, centa, deci. They are irrelevant to this scale because there's nothing medication-wise that you're not going to fit here. Okay? And so just watch. So what's just pick, someone just pick a number of grams, like a whole number. Okay, too much. Like a, one single digit here. Five. I'm going with five. All right, five. <laughs> I, like, I think you mean, so let's just say we have five grams, okay? And it, grams is written as a lowercase g just because the uppercase g looks like, confusing. So five grams of something. So what that's saying is that we want to, if we need to change grams, the larger guy, to milli, the smaller one. And so what this is saying is like, oh, you got King Arthur, whatever, you got the king. G, you got Guinevere, the queen, in King Arthur's story. No. Crap. She's a little bit smaller than the king. All right, whatever. Women are smaller than men, typically. That's just an anatomy thing. doesn't really matter. Just for context here. Millie is like the little girl. She's a toddler, whatever. Millie, okay? And then Micra's a little baby, okay? And that's their scale. The king is the biggest. You got Guinevere kind of in the middle ground. And then the kids, Millie, older kid, micro the baby. And again, the liters and milliliters just fit on the same part of the scale here. And so I drew it at an angle for a reason. It's like we're going either big to small or small to big. And so what they're saying here is, oh, convert grams larger to milligrams. Milli being the first kid. So grams is larger than that. And so anywhere we're moving with this, like I said, because we're only worried about these measurements for medicine, everywhere we move is a thousand times. It's either going to be a thousand times smaller or a thousand times bigger. So if I'm using this as a scale, right, this is getting smaller. This is getting bigger, as in like the king's the biggest head honcho or whatever. Grams to milligrams, you see now, grams to milli is a moving from a bigger unit of measurement down to a smaller unit of measurement. And so what it tells us is that, okay, what you should do here is you're either going to multiply by 100, or 100, excuse me. You're going to multiply by 1,000 each time you move on this scale. If you're going this way, if you're going to the right on the scale, you're going down the right side of the scale, you're going to the right. Multiply by a thousand and it makes sense when you think about it. This goes back to my cup scenario, right? It takes a larger number of little babies to fill up the same or little kids to fill the same size as the adult. So that means that my number is going to get bigger if I'm getting smaller on the scale. It's like the uh, what is the what's the movie? little rascals or something where they put like three kids on top of each other to pretend to be an adult, right? You see what I'm saying? It takes more of them to fill up the same amount of space. That's why I'm multiplying. So if I travel right or down this scale, I'm multiplying by a thousand or, or my favorite method, these are, e or means I can do either option or I move the decimal. three places and that's what this is saying in small print that you can't read those because moving the decimal three places is moving it a thousand places right because it goes tens hundreds thousands on the third decimal move so your options for this pick whatever makes more sense to you 
I don't do the multiplying and dividing, like if I'm going to convert something myself, only because I still will accidentally flip those around. And if you do that, then you're always going to be wrong. So I like to move the decimals. I think it's simpler, but do what you want. So let's look at it both ways. Going back to the five grams, we're saying, hey, convert five grams larger to the smaller milligrams. How do I do that? I either take five times a thousand or I move the decimal. So five times a thousand. Anybody? Easy peasy. Five grams is equivalent to five thousand milligrams. Milli milligrams. That's what we're saying. Again, the decimal place moving would say, because all I did was I, mul I multiplied by a thousand. If I had a decimal, remember all the whole numbers have magic imaginary decimals behind them. I would just move the decimal to the right, because this is the scale I've drawn, to the right. Everything you own in the box to the, that's to the left, to the right, okay. One, two, three. Now what I recommend when you do do this, it, when, you do, when you do this, not do-do, is you put zeros as you go, because that's what you're doing. Now, bam, here my decimal is here, decimal is gone from here. 5,000 milligrams. So those are your two options to get there. So if I'm going, the next one down here is talking about up the scale, going up the scale. Up the scale means I'm going from a right smaller unit of measurement up to a larger unit of measurement. So give me, uh, so look, again, that's like saying I'm going left. I'm going up the scale, and my options are divide now by 1,000. Because it's going to take less bigger measurements to fill up the same space the smaller measurements take. That cup, what I was talking about with the cup scenario. Or it'd be move decimal three places to the left. If we're going down, the is going down. Correct. When you're going down, you're multiplying. When you're going up, you're dividing. If that's what makes sense to you, memorize it, repeat it, you're done forever. All right, give me a random number like uh, that's in the hundreds, in the hundreds. 200. 200, all right. I don't know what someone said, but I'll just go with 200. All right, 200. So let's say I, again, convert milligrams small to grams, larger unit measurement. So if I said, okay, I have 200 milligrams. So that puts me here, milli, the little girl on the scale, and I'm trying to go, to my left, I'm going up the scale to a larger unit of measurement. That's what converting is doing. The two options, again, is I'm either going to multiply or divide. So if I'm going from small to something large or something big, I am dividing. So I would take this 200, divide by 1,000. Or, again, I can move the decimal. But if I divide it by 1,000, anybody, what is it? Point. No. 200, 200, not the 5, 200. 200 divided by 1,000. Yeah, point, <laughs> point zero 0.02. Who said 5? I'm not doing 5 anymore. I said 5. Because we were talking about 5 grams earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about 200 milligrams. We're trying to convert that. So. We're trying to convert this from milligrams to grams, the bigger unit of measurement. So again, you have to, you ha if you're going to do the multiply divide, you have to know which way you're going. Otherwise, you, you're going to multiply when you should divide, divide when you multiply. And that's my brain doesn't like it. It just doesn't compute for me. But that is a valid method. If that's your memorization, go for it. I just like moving the decimal. So yeah, I either divide by 1,000 or I move the decimal. Every whole number, 200 is a whole number. There's no decimals right now. has imaginary whole number, or excuse me, imaginary decimal behind it. So I just say, oh, I'm going from something small to large means my decimal moves to the left three places. And that is just one, two, three. That's all it is. So. 
this is equivalent, 200 milligrams is equivalent to 0 0.2 grams. And that's all you do with conversions. So what we work towards now is what we work towards now is saying, hey, you got a doctor that orders something in grams, but all you have available is tablets that come in milligrams. Going back to the principles right of ratio of portion, that means I'm going to have to convert because like we talked about with the time stuff, right? If I had something that's like I do this many thing every eight hours, right? But then I have how many days is that going to be? Well, I have to convert the days to hours. That's just converting time now. That we've already started talking about that. That's what we're doing here. Now we're just converting measurements. But it doesn't change the value. Two grams would weigh exact, would feel exactly the same and weigh exactly the same on a scale. I mean, two, 0.2 grams versus 200 milligrams. They would feel and weigh exactly the same on the scale. Okay? They have the same number. They're the same amount of medicine, the same amount of weight, whatever. Just changing the scale. Okay, so that's your introduction to that. <laughs> Is your brain okay? <laughs> That was not too bad. Again, I like my little King, King Arthur, Guinevere, Millie, the, ba the kid, and Micro, the baby, as a way of thinking about it as a scale. And this is a lot of what we're practicing, this kind of thing with keeping with our medication stuff. And so this is another example, another chart that's a scale. Again, most of these you find online have all of them. These are all the measurements. You know, in the middle is the unit, so in the middle here is the grams, the liters, the meters. And then everything, that's why they like metric system, because everything is either divisible or multiple, a multiple of, it's all a multiple of 10. And so they're just saying, whichever way I'm going down, so like you see, they're going, they're traveling down the staircase, they're multiplying. They're traveling up the staircase, right? They're dividing. And that's all they're saying. But again, we have the luxury of nursing and medicine that there are no medicines that come in hecto or deca. There are no medicines that are in deci or centi. And then they don't even have the scale. Micro would be here. Three steps further down. Micro is all the way down there with no measurement in between it. That's basically what they're doing. So the scales are just trying to help you get a visual representation of it. That's all. Of like, what am I doing here? What's happening? And it's the same thing with micrograms and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so again, conversion metric systems, what we talked about a lot. So again, the metric system, all we're worrying about is those measurements I talked about. Kilograms, grams milligrams and micrograms and again these are not drawn to scale they're just drawn to what we're going to use and again liters fits right here and milliliters fits there and those six is all we ever work with and again I'm not converting anything to volume or anything to weight I can't do that it just has to be on that so again if I go down the scale I'm multiplying by a thousand or the decimal place three times if I'm going up the scale I am dividing by a thousand or moving the decimal three places to the left and it's always just three places because you're not doing any conversions with anything else in the metric system except this stuff this is the only thing that medicine is going to come in so all the other things de deci, deci and centi deca hecto they don't matter because you're not going to do anything with those so everything is a thousand times jump up or down so the examples are giving us is saying i have zero uh excuse me zero point zero four grams and they're just showing you here, let's move the decimal. They're saying, okay, one, two, three, which would be a zero here. So 0 0.04 is the same, grams is the same thing as saying 40. And if you see that too, if I took 0 0.04, right, I'm going from grams down to milli. So that means I'm, I would take this multiplied by 1,000. If I do that, I'm going to get 40. And that's just kind of what they're showing us, kind of the same concept. All right, opposite way, right? I've got milli, milli, two grams. So I'm going from small up to something bigger. I have 250 milligrams. They're just showing you, hey, 
That means the decimal is behind it. I'm moving over three places. One, two, three. Now the decimal's here. But again, I'm going from something small up to something bigger. That would be the same thing as saying 250 divided by 1,000. And that would give me 0.25 grams. Not, I mean, it doesn't change the value of it. Okay, okay. No. You, the only reason, I'm, only reason they're doing that and I'm doing that is because kind of the rules of with decimals, I want a leading zero because I want a leading zero because if I write this like that, it's still the same thing, but it gives me a little bit of a pause of a question like, did, you, did this person mean to have this decimal here or is it like a freckle? Is it like a piece of, what is this, right? But it's a lot more straightforward of, I, okay, that's definitely a decimal. Here it's unsure. And so the Joint Commission, people recommend when writing this out, I should have this. So I always say have a leading zero. Right. And then this is still the same thing. It's still the same value, but now it just looks a little more confusing. And I don't need the trailing zero because zero is just still worthless. It's still worth nothing. So I can just erase any zeros I have trailing the decimal to make it less, it's all about less confusion, right? So, yeah. And so that's what we did here, basically. We moved over and we just said, put a zero in front to help me and I don't need this guy anymore. It means the same. That makes sense, right? Okay. Um, 0.8 milligrams to micro. So again, now we are looking at milli. So we're here and we're going to micro, which is a smaller unit measurement and all of them are a thousand times bigger or smaller. So this is a thousand times smaller, which means my options are multiply by a thousand or move the decimal three places to the right on this scale. So 0 0.8 would either be multiply by a thousand or I'm going to one, two, and as I do this, I always add zeros, three. So again, one, two, three decimal place movements. And so decimals now there, that would give me 800. If I did 0.8 times 1,000, that would also give me 800. So it basically all this is saying is that 800 micrograms is equivalent to 0.8 milligrams. Um, and Again, the usefulness of this is if the doctor ordered a gram of something and you only have tablets that come in milligrams, you can only work with what you have. You can't drive to the pharmacy, you know, and buy something different that fits the, the order. But we have to give what's ordered. So the way we do that is we convert to give the equivalent of what is ordered. It just may be in milligrams versus grams. It doesn't matter because they're the same. They're equivalent to each other. So 400 micrograms and milligrams is going the opposite way. So 400 milligrams, if I do this, but now I erase this, make you remember it, just get this whole thing gone now. Because this is, I see people that will write that on their tests, and that's a good practice. But the goal is by the time we get done with unit two and this whole class, that you don't even really need to write that. You just have it. You know, you have it in your repertoire now to know this. But... I would encourage you to write that little scale like I did when you start practicing this, just to keep it straight in your head, right? So 400 milligrams, right, to, you can see the answer, to, or excuse me, 400 micrograms, excuse me, two milligrams. Micro is smaller or is it larger than milligrams? Smaller. smaller. So that means I'm going down the scale, right? So if I'm going down the scale for my multiply divide people, what am I doing if I get smaller? Multiplying, all right? For my decimal movers, which way am I moving my decimal? Three, to the, place to the right. th three places to the right. So, or excuse me. Wait, wait. Wait, yeah. Wait, we go, we go wait, what, no, you were going up, sorry. I, I said it incorrectly, see? You're dividing, or you're moving your decimal three places to the, your left, yes. So, micrograms is smaller. I'm going up to bigger, so I'm going up the scale, so one, two, three, or again, divide by a thousand. And this will give me 0 0.4. Now it's in milligrams because I converted it to that unit of measurement.
Where's the thing email over? Uh, so the, the point they're making about rounding here is rounding to measurable doses um, based on the equipment available and stuff like that. And make sure you're verifying the dose is correct. So for now on everything I have, and also if you look in your course content, I have a couple practice sheets for this stuff. So these aren't even the homework. The homework is practice of this, but not the homework, not anything. Just regular old made up problems to practice. That's it. Okay? That you got some available plus the homework should be somewhat of a practice of this kind of stuff. But there's a practice sheets available in the unit two section of D2L. It's basically saying that you need to have a you need to round to something specific. All those practice sheets, all my exams, I tell you how to round but it's all to get you kind of used to a certain way of rounding, and we'll kind of talk about that. Again, this is just a summary of rounding. You're, if you're rounding to the nearest tenth, you're looking at the decimal place behind it, right? Five or more, it goes up. Four or less, doesn't change, goes down. So that means something like 1.43, if I'm supposed to round to the tenths place, means it's 1.4. Something like 1.28, Right, the eight is going to say, oh, well, this two is going to go up if I'm trying to get to the tens place. So that's 1.3. And so this, do we have time? We have time. We have time. So this principle really is, is the important for this. The rounding stuff comes in play with syringes, okay? And so we are gonna, we're going to show some syringes. That's what we're going to do. So... Uh, let me get some that don't have needles because I don't trust you people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, well, you know. Some of these are going to, yeah. I don't think I have any. I'm... Very disorganized today. Uh, well, that one can't even read the writing on it. All right. Uh, ah! You still working? Hello? Okay. All right. Play with these a little bit if you haven't played with them before. I'm going to start over. You guys are spread out over there. But I've got something to show you anyway. So take a look at these and look at syringes. So do you need to look at them? Yeah. And then if you could like you know, throw them to him and he can throw them to someone else. So syringes is kind of the key crux of the whole rounding thing for me. And so my rounding principles usually reflect that. Um, what they're saying here, okay, is it depends on your syringe. So this, this slide is giving you a perfect example of this. This slide is giving you an idea with syringes. And this is where we start to come into this stuff. We start to talk about liquid medications. We need to start having this conversation now. Sorry, I'm pulling up a thing real quick. Do, 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 do. Where's that? Uh, right there. And right there. Okay, so this is this cart pretty much has most every syringe you're gonna see. Now there are bigger syringes than 10 milliliters, and I don't have any 10 mil syringes for some. Or they're they're I misplaced them. I have a five. Where's my? T I don't know where my 10 is. I wasn't prepared. Whatever. Um, there are syringes that are, can be huge, but they're typically not used for anything like an injection in a muscle or injection in, in a, an IV line. You don't really use anything bigger than a 10 for those kind of things. Um, and so our rounding principle is actually kind of based on what our equipment is. And what our equipment is, is the syringes we have. So if I pull this virtual card up and we look at a one milliliter syringe, you have one that's passed around, and I'm going to zoom in. Look at this guy. Look at what you can measure to. Look at this. This is one whole milliliter, right? 
it has big lines and big numbers that are showing me to the tens place. You see that, right? So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way to 1. So what this means for rounding principles is that typically when you're talking about liquid medications that you're going to give as an injection, I'm, and again, I'm not going to test you directly over these, but I'm going to start preaching this now, and you'll hear this a million times to the end that it'll make you sick. Um, so much that you can do it without having directions, that you know how to round as a nurse without having directions. The thing is, I know that, okay, if my answer is less than one, say I get an answer to a problem, we're talking about liquids, and I get something like 0.67 milliliters. I know my rounding principle is going to be this. This is less than one, okay? This answer is less than one. I can measure this in a one mill syringe. So if I look, here's your 0 0.6 there. Point, you know, all these little hash marks are hundredths place. Look, 0 0.61, 0 0.6, oh, come on. 0 0.62, 3, 4, 5, 0.65, right? 0 0.6, 7, 0 0.68, so on and so forth. You see that? Until you get to 0 0.7. Is that making sense? So one, the rounding principle would be if I have less than one as an answer, I can round to the hundredths place because I have a syringe that reads to the hundredths place, okay? So this would be point, stop it, 0 0.67, so 65, 66, 67 milliliters. That's exactly what I'd give, bam, all good. Look at the next syringe we have available to us. Again, these are all the syringes you would have available to you. One mil, three milliliter syringes, five milliliter syringes, and 10 milliliter syringes. So the next step up I have in size is a three mil syringe. Now let's look at this guy. So notice something right off the bat, right? <clears throat> Look at this. So there's a half, there's one whole milliliter, two whole milliliters, and three whole milliliters. But look at the hash marks here. So if this is, this is the same thing as saying 0 0.5, this is saying, right, 1.5 milliliters, 2.5 milliliters, and so on, right? So what, is the, what place is that? The tens place. I have no lines or hash marks to measure to the hundreds place. You notice this? And this goes for every syringe after this. Five mil, 10 mil syringe. Well, five mils go by twos, but we're not gonna leave it alone. I can't measure anything smaller if I'm over one. So when I'm greater than one, I have to measure to the tens place, which means that I'm going to round every answer I get when we're talking about liquids Okay, we're talking about syringes, injectables. I'm going to round everything that's more than one to the tens place. Anything less than one, I can round to the hundreds place. So I can't have an answer, what was that, 0. 0.67? If I had 1.67, I can't, where am I going to measure that? Am I just going to guess? No, I don't want to do that, right? I mean, like, oh, well, 1.6 is here, so 1.67 is like there? I don't know. You can't be that, you have to be precise, right? As precise as you can be. There, you can give them back to me. You have to be precise, right? So what's 1.67 rounded to the tenths place? 1.7. Look, again, tenths place is here. I look behind it. Is that a five or more? Yes, it's a seven. It goes away and changes this guy to the next number up, which is seven. That would be your final answer, and that's what you would draw up. So 1.5, 1.6, 1.7-ish. I don't know. I always forget what these lines are. But So syringes, I'll have a video that explains this more, but syringes, as far as what you're looking at, these are the exact same. But sometimes syringes have a little, these, some of these guys do too, they have a little bevel on them that looks like this, part of the plunger. And that's what this is called. So you have the whole barrel, and then you have the plunger. Oh, that didn't make a, some of these make a satisfying sound, and that's my favorite thing to do. I used to do it all the time. That was my fidget spinner before they were fidget spinners. And so the, some of these plungers have a little bevel on them, but you don't measure to that. You measure to the flat part of this plunger, this part right here. That's what you're measuring to, not that beveled up end, okay? 
And um, again, you have to go with what your, your equipment is. And so everything over one, I can't measure to that hundredths place. It has to be rounded to the tenths place. And so that's the rounding principles I start teaching you guys, and that's what I fall. Now, I give that direction to you on all the practice sheets and on the test so that you see it. But I'm telling you that now because I just had the same conversation with former students of mine that are in second right now. And the second trimester, you have a comp test, a, a comprehensive test about dosage calculation that you have to pass to be able to pass meds. And if you can't pass meds in clinical, it's done. You, you don't move forward. You've got to repeat one test. You get a couple attempts at it, but that's one test. So Miss Manners, and even if she's retired by the time you guys get to her, I'm still not going to let them even do it. They're not going to give you rounding instructions because you can't make up your own instructions. What are you going to make up a new syringe? You see, you see my point? When I'm talking about IV or liquid medicines, when we talk about those things with syringes, I can only use what I have. There is nothing else in the world besides one mil syringe, three mil, five, ten. That's it. Now, there was insulin syringes, but that's a whole ball game that I'm not going to open up today at all because we don't want to get there. But that has nothing to do with white. It's, it's just different. You'll see. But anyway. So that discussion is what I'm just introducing you to syringes. And we'll do some practice with this in this unit. But this becomes a big deal in unit three when we really focus on pretty much predominantly IV medicines. This time around, we are still focused on... Uh, uh, liquid medications plus our regular pill calculations and putting that all together with, with dosage and then adding the effect of the big crux of unit two is can you get some of this metric system stuff down. So again they're saying hey example is 0.756 is what I got. I know this fits it's less than one so it, I can measure it in a one milliliter syringe but I can't measure it that specific so I got to go to the next best thing which is the hundredths place. So 0.56 would round up to 0.76, and I can measure that, and I can give it. And that's all they're kind of saying with, like, rounding. Rounding has to be to kind of the consistent of what your equipment is, what you're working with. Those are your rounding principles. Again, I'm going to give them to you, but that's, that's where your rounding principles start. So I'm just kind of introducing that. Um, let me get right here real quick. We'll finish up. Um, uh... Um, this is one point. I kind of went slower today than I wanted to. Um, sometimes you'll read questions that talk about scored tablets. Have you guys ever heard of a scored tablet? Some people maybe. A scored tablet, have you ever seen a tablet that has like a little in line on it like this? That's a scored tablet. Those are tablets that have the ability to be broken in half, right? If I need to take half a pill or something like that. Just know for any question I ask you, you can assume the tablet is scored, okay? Because we're in imaginary land, right, where we're just trying to do the math. So you don't need to think that hard about it. But that's what they're talking about. Scored tablets means that a tablet is designed from the pharmacy or the pharmaceutical company that made it that says this tablet can be broken. And some tablets can be even scored like that way, where you can break them into little quarters. But it, technically speaking, this is a nursing-specific thing, not a test question for me or anything, but... Technically speaking, if a tablet doesn't have a score, then that tablet was not manufactured in mind to be broken in half because it's hard, you can't break it in half evenly. You can try, and they have pill cutters, and pill cutters are all they are is a little clamp with a razor blade in them. That's all they are. And you can clamp down on the pill and hopefully cut it in half. But if it's not scored, it's usually not a break. You don't break it because it wasn't manufactured with the intent to be cut in halves or in quarters. Um, again, that's very nursing specific. I'm not going to challenge you on that. I'm just letting you know what score tablet means. That's all I'm letting you know. You can assume every tablet, whether it's said or not for me, is scored. It's, we live in an imaginary world where we're just working on the math, so everything is scored. Everything can be broken in half for me. Because again, I don't always use real medications. I don't use that kind of stuff. Yes, do you have a question? Oh, okay, sorry. So let me just paint this picture so we have something to talk about next week. It's talking about a two-step calculation and not like the dance, right? So, okay. all right. That's an old song. All right. What are they, again, I know I'm like, you're like, right at the end? Yes. So when they're talking about a two-step calculation, we are not changing anything. What do you think they're talking about two-step? Look, look at this, right? This part, right? Look, ordered 100 milligrams. 
you have 0 0.5 grams. You see this? That's the two step they're talking about. The only step we're adding is this conversion process. Because remember the key rule with ratio of portion in any of this stuff, no matter what method you use, you've got to have the same unit measurement. It's got to be the same. So you got to convert. Now, which way you go is technically, categorically up to you. Okay. The book does have a method for that. Typically, I'm trying to always change. And I, you know, I know we're at the end, but listen to me. I promise this is important. I will reiterate this next week, but I always change to what I have. And the reason is, the reason is, right, if I'm standing at a place that has medications, this is my medication cart. I'm just using this as an object. And I look, and it has 0.5 gram tablets available. Maybe Miss uh, Mary in the room that gets this medication takes gram tablets at home, and I walk in and I convert it to milligrams. It's equivalent, and I say, here's your blah, 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 milligrams of what? And she might go, huh? No, 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 it's in grams. You're wrong. I don't know what a milligram is. And you're like, what do you do? Explain the metric system to an 80-year-old woman that doesn't care? No, she's not going to listen to you. I'm saying it's a trust thing. It's not always a perfect thing, but if you do the math to what you have, you limit yourself on confusion between the patient and just your general confusion. Now, it's not a perfect system, but that's what I would recommend. That's what the book recommends. Always change and convert to the measurement that you have on hand here. So in this scenario, with the last like three minutes of class, I have 100 milligrams is ordered. I have 0 0.05 gram, gram tablets. So what you have to do is, right, I need to convert to what you have on hand. On hand is the grams. So I'm looking at first step before I do anything is I got to change this guy to what I have. This guy has to become grams, right? So remember, grams is larger than milligrams on that scale, right? The scale was like this. So what am I going to do to this to turn it into grams? Divide by 1,000 or move your decimal three places to the left. Everything you know in the box to the left, in the closet, please don't touch. All right, so you can keep running that mouth, that's fine. All right, so decimals there, one, two, three. Now the decimal's here, or again, I'm dividing that 100 by 1,000. So I get 0 0.1. These zeros can go away. I don't need the trailing zeros. This is what I converted the 100. So 100 milligrams is equal okay, to 0 0.1 grams. Now I can figure this out because I basically go, right, and they're showing you how to do it the long way, to use ratio of portion to figure it out. You don't have to do that, okay? You can do this like you learn, and you can plug it in. So my x in this case is how many tablets do I give this person, right? Right? Right, I mean, that's, we're trying to find a dose. So I change that to 0.1 grams. I have 0 0.05. Did I do that wrong? No, I did that right. Yeah, 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 okay. My brain was hurting there. I'm trying to go too fast. 0 0.05 gram is to one tablet, and I got to put this way over here. Tabs, okay? Does that make sense how we got there? No, yes? So again, we didn't change anything. All we did was add an extra step of, we just gotta make sure we're working with the same unit measurement. And I told you guys that before, right? With the thing like hours versus days, or minutes versus hours, that's a conversion, right? I couldn't figure out a problem if it was talking about, I did something every 15 minutes, but the other thing was, well, how many happens in eight hours? I couldn't figure it out without doing this converting first. So this is what I'm just leaving you to chew on here is that this. So I take one times 0 0.1 is just 0 0.1, 0 0.05 x equals 0 0.1. I've got to divide and I can tell you what this is just because 0 0.1 is the same thing as saying that. It's 2. Because it takes two 0 0.05s to get to 0 0.1. x equals 
tablets, and then if I was ever curious, I'd plug it back in. So our math never changed was that. We just add another step of making sure we have the same unit of measurements, which you've already done, right? You've already done this. So that's where we'll leave it. And so really the big thing for unit two is know those nursing math need to knows, because I'm going to start throwing some teaspoons and tablespoons at you on tests now, and you'll never not see them again for me. So those, and the pounds, kilograms, like the memorization ones. And then we're, look at those practice sheets, but this is what we're going to work on. We're going to work on two-step solving medication questions where we got to convert first, okay?